Hello, everybody. Uh, sorry for being late on this Hangout. I was with students uh, here at MEC, uh, challenging for a Google, uh, for a, sorry, egg drop challenge. The, well, our students are uh, working over the weekend and having fun with these kind of challenges. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, a few uh, questions we may have about the, the curriculum. Uh, I can start with um, um, hints on what is the uh, interdisciplinary curriculum at uh, MEC. Uh, basically, the, the main uh, objective of this curriculum is to be uh, industry connected. The, the connection with the industry is at the art of the curriculum and to reach this connection to the industry, then three main parts have to be uh, told to the students. The, the first one is on the engineering, of course, since uh, we uh, give a degree in uh, engineering in the three branches, uh, computer science, electrical and electronic engineering, mechanical engineering and civil engineering. So, but Engineering is not, it's only a small part of an important uh, yet part of the, the curriculum. But from the industry perspective, you have also to be aware of what is the, uh, how to run a business and how to manage people. So this is the second part of uh, the curriculum. And the first part, if you want to make the industry uh, at the uh, very edge of the development, then you have to have uh, creativity. Creativity is a very important uh, topic on the uh, curriculum here. So uh, now the question, if I come back to uh, engineering, well, engineering, it is not only one simple branch. We have four branches up to now, four, four branches up to now, sorry, but Actually, we start with a core curriculum. This core curriculum uh, is uh, about uh, two uh, years long. And uh, in this core curriculum, we first uh, teach uh, basic sciences, since uh, all the uh, engineering branches are based on the same basic sciences. So all are based on math, physics, chemistry. So we have this core curriculum and we have also a core curriculum in engineering, meaning that whatever uh, the, the branch uh, a student is uh, registered in, then it will be exposed to computer science, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, because all these subjects have, been all these topics have to be known to some extent by anyone working in an industry because they have to be able to talk with others. I'm looking whether I can find uh, the questions from uh, people on the uh, online, but I see that there is only one viewer up to now. I don't. Okay, let's uh, now come to the point of how we can fit all these in one uh, single degree. So the uh, basic uh, pedagogical principle is, in fact, twofold. The idea is have one going from theory to practice and another stream going from practice to theory, which means that at the same time, the students will have basic uh, topics to be uh, studied, like math and physics. And then, as uh, they have more knowledge in these different branches, and after that in their, in their, uh, in their engineering specialization, they will be able to transfer this knowledge to a common practice. But at the same time, starting from the very beginning, we want the students to be uh, in connection with the outside world. And we want the students to 
understand the complexity of the world as it is and to try to relate this complexity to the knowledge they already have. So it's a sort of holistic approach of the world where they have to pick things from the outside world to try to understand. And the way to do that is not necessarily from a purely scientific point of view. And as an example for uh, during the first semester, they already had to shoot a very, very small documentary, only a few minutes, to on a topic they have chosen, just to make the connection with the outside world to have to try to put a um, new eye on the world that is outside the campus. So uh, you could ask, uh, <clears throat> is this curriculum completely new compared to what it exists in the uh, other institution, either in India or in the world? Actually, you can say that uh, this uh, tendency to um, add more uh, to have a multidisciplinary and this idea of having a multidisciplinary curriculum is at the heart of the uh, pedagogical model of Ecole Centrale Paris and we've been doing this for 100 years actually but if you look in india for example the now in most of the iit all of the iits have already a one year common core and some of them are thinking of having a two year common core which means that this idea of having a common core not only based on engineering but on basic science and adding humanities and uh, business and management it is not completely new it's a new trend and it is developing very strongly if you look at american university more and more students instead of entering uh, directly in a university they often go to liberal art colleges for their bachelor and then they go to an university only at the uh, master level so this idea of, of having a broader education uh, at the bachelor degree is something you can find all over the world. Okay, so uh, if I can comment a little bit, let me... Look at uh, a few questions I have here online. Uh, why do we have so many humanities and creative science courses? Okay, let me answer uh, this uh, question first. So, why humani humanities and creative science? Well, it's very simple. When you are in the industry, it's good to have very good products, that's for sure. But you first have to understand people and you have to bring something new on the market. To understand people, there is nothing better than humanities to develop your communication skills. And this is at the heart of our communication. And humanities have been developing for thousands of years. And this is the background on which is based our society. So the importance of not only reading and writing properly, but to, to understand complex philosophical uh, questions is at the heart of understanding others, understanding their needs. And in the industry, this is what you have to do to understand the needs of your clients, but also to have to understand the needs and your motivations of your uh, colleagues, because you have to work in a team. And being alone, not being able to communicate with others will prevent you for working uh, properly. So now the second question is the creativity. The, I think we have a, a wrong idea of what art means. So, well, actually, we tend to think that we have, in some part, very great artists, and on the other side, people working. We strongly believe that everyone can express its creativity and you have to do this in your job and 
actually art is more a practice than something coming from you you don't know where you, you are not gifted as an artist few ones are not gifted as artists everyone can be an artist and everyone has to create new things including their own life okay so that's why the well we, we can talk of liberal arts but we can talk also on mechanical arts which is basically engineering and this uh, difference between engineering and liberal art is something which is quite new in history and what we we deeply think is that when you talk about design for example in the design you have to be an artist you have to create new things but you have to create things that can meet very severe uh, technological constraints so to be the creator of the new object of the future, the new tools of the future, you have to be a creator and you have to be yourself an artist. And that's why we put a lot of emphasis on, in the curriculum on this artistic skills, creativity skills to have students who would be able in their future to be creators, innovators. That's the, uh, the main idea. Let me go to the, uh, the second question I have here. Okay, I have a question. What shall be the role of internships during the four-year courses? Okay, this is uh, strongly related to the uh, Industry uh, Connect idea. The, I think the, the idea of an, an internship is not, um, has not a, a very good um, character here uh, in India, I believe. Whereas uh, the the practice we have on, of internship in France is uh, very important, since we, we deeply think that uh, once you have a good internship program, then you don't need any placement program. And uh, the idea is not sending the students in one given industry and not. Uh, paying any attention to, to them when they are there. We really create links with the industry to have this internship really part of the curriculum, part of the training of the students. And usually, if I take the example of what we've uh, been doing in France, well, all the internships during the, the last year end up with a job offer. That's almost uh, obvious for either the students and the people in the company. Of course, if the student wants to go in another company because he feels that he's not happy in this specific company or if the job is what's given is not what he was expecting, then he can, of course, choose to, to go somewhere else. So, but let me go to the uh, next uh, question. Why are students exposed to all the branches of engineering? Okay, this is a, a great issue, especially in India, where people tend to think strongly in terms of branches. I am computers in computer science and engineering. I'm in civil engineering. I'm in mechanical engineering. I'm in electrical and electronics engineering. Okay, the good point you can see is in each of the, these cases, you have engineering and the we deeply think that engineering cannot be divided into so many pieces. Of course, you have to specialize in one given field, but you have to have a broad view of the engineering area. Because when you talk to when you talk about any any uh, let's say a car, let's say an airplane, let's say um, a building it is not restricted to one specific field because you have to combine all together electronics you have to use computers you have to do computer simulation you have to connect your car with uh, the internet you have to connect your building with the internet you have to uh, put lots of electronics inside your car inside your building so being only a mechanical engineering or a civil engineering wouldn't help at all, the company you are working 
way because you wouldn't be able to talk with others working on electronics. So if you want to become the architect of the new object, the new things product by the industry, you have to be a multidisciplinary engineer and not only specialized in one specific field. This is actually our strong belief. Let me go to a few other questions. I could have here online. Okay. So now I have a, a question to understand. Sorry, this is. So if I uh, can comment. Uh, a little bit on this uh, idea of having a multi. Okay, here I see Pravin connecting with us. Hi, Pravin. Yeah, finally, first, uh, very good morning to you, and thank you for taking the lead in this hangout. And let me not interrupt you. You seem to be answering a question. Please go on. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, I, I want to interact with you. Do you have a? Uh, um, Definitely, Professor. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was listening to uh, the questions you were answering, and I was ask sending some questions to you myself. Let me take the trouble of repeating a couple of them. Uh, uh, you're French yourself, and we are uh, really proud to have a couple of deans at MEC who are actually from Ecole Centrale Paris who have joined us uh, uh, with great passion and commitment. Being a French uh, yourself, uh, what do you, uh, how would you rate the relevance and importance of uh, the French language in our curriculum? A lot of uh, students have been asking about why, why mandatory French, why do we have to go for French, why not some other language? But uh, we, we, have a, we have our own way of convincing them, but I would like it to come from your side as well. Okay, the, the first point is that we, uh, as I speak now as uh, French, and uh, we are very lucky to, to work here in India because uh, in India we have people speaking already so many languages. All the teaching is done in, in English and all our stu uh, students speak English already, but they speak already many different Indian languages. And so adding one language is not such an issue for the students already uh, used to speak different languages. And what is the main interest of French in terms of their uh, career? Uh, where I think there are two main aspects. The French is gives you access to the, uh, let's say, the Roman or Latin uh, part of the world, which includes not only France, but uh, Spain and Brazil and all the South America. So this is the, the family of Latin languages, and once you know French, it's very easy to switch to Italian, uh, Bra Brazilian, or Spanish. But restricting to French only, then you have access not only to France, of course, to Belgium and Switzerland, but you already have access to a large part of Canada. In Montreal, you could speak French, or in Quebec. But most important for the future, we believe, you have access to half of Africa. North Africa speaks French. A large part of the West Africa speaks French. So French is the language you use in Africa to do business. Okay? So that's the important point we think of speaking French. And it gives also access to Europe and to France. That's the basic reason why we, we think that our students can learn French, and this is, once again, as they already know so many languages, this is not difficult to learn a new language once you know. And actually, if you look at the French word, they are very close to English words. So once you know English, then your vocabulary is already ready to, to learn French. You only have to learn a bit of the pronunciation and the, uh, the grammar, but this is at least, you can think that you can get very easily a survival kit in French which allows you to, so not only to work all over the world, also to, because we have French companies like, like Safran, like Daiso, like uh, Thales, 
who have many uh, um, factories and uh, units in, in India and being able to talk to others in both companies is extremely important and being an Indian working in both companies your career if not only you understand the French language but you can also understand the French culture and this is the last point, important point in uh, trying to um, learn a foreign language is you not only uh, learn a language you, and you're able to understand people because related to any language there is a sort of way of thinking which is a little bit different from and it will help you a lot and then how people can think on that side. Definitely, Professor. A okay. language Arlen, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, that makes perfect sense, Professor. A language is always a bridge across uh, cultures, across technologies, you know, across uh, time, in fact. And uh, coming back to language and uh, the pronunciation aspect of uh, fr French language. Now, you've been in India for about uh, six months now uh, with us, mingling with students from across the country. Uh, how, 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 how do you find uh, uh, picking up a foreign language yourself? For example, you may have been exposed to a lot of uh, Hindi and Telugu on campus. Uh, how, how easy or how difficult has it been for you to relate to a foreign language at your age with your experience? Do you think it's easy for a person who's you know, already learned a few languages in his life? I strongly believe that it is much more easy for students at their age to uh, learn a foreign language than it could be uh, for me to learn uh, Telugu or Hindi. And I, I have to confess that I know very few in terms of Telugu and, uh, and Hindi and uh, I restrict my communication with the students in, to English. That's, so that, that's why they have to learn it uh, when they are young because their brain is uh, much uh, more uh, ready to have new things than uh, our brains which are getting old. Well, I I'm sure in a few years from now we are going to have hangouts with you in uh, Hindi and Telugu as well. But that's for yeah, the future. Yeah, let's try. <laughs> All right. So I have another question for you, Professor, uh, uh, on the uh, multidisciplinary mode of uh, uh, you know, pedagogy at MEC. Uh, we are trying to create a, a global engineer here, a, a business technocrat, uh, a technological expert all combined into one and the multiple disciplines being taught along with the interdisciplinary approach to education uh, how do you think it would relate in a global context well the the it is uh, always uh, actually from my uh, French perspective uh, difficult to to understand uh, this uh, and to explain this notion of uh, multidisciplinary because it is so much embedded in the uh, pedagogical model that we think that it is so obvious that an engineer has to uh, be able to understand and to know the basics of each and every uh, specialty in engineering that uh, it is part of the well. For us, we we are not a mechanical engineer in France. We are not civil engineer. We are engineers. That's it. And uh, when uh, I uh, give this answer, uh, it is not only in terms of uh, engineering specialization. It is also in terms of the fact that an engineer is someone who is operating in a company. So the uh, technical skills are extremely important. The technical knowledge is extremely important. But the, the way you are interacting with others is also extremely important. And this is the part on the what we usually call the soft skills, which is part of the uh, multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary program. Because you have to well, the, most of the projects, you, you cannot work alone in a company. You have to work with so many different people with who have so many 
different backgrounds and point of view, but you have to first understand what is their point of view, what is their work with them. So not only uh, to be able to do yourself or to understand yourself a bit of electrical or uh, mechanical engineering, but you have to understand the point of view of the others working with you. That is the at the heart of the uh, the idea of having this multidisciplinary uh, curriculum. Fine, doctor. And uh, uh, going forward on the curriculum again, uh, okay, I accept the curriculum that you have created for me as a student. I, I put in my best efforts and at the end of four years I get my BTEC from MEC and where would that leave me exactly? Yeah, there is a job assurance that MEC is providing to every applicant. Uh, but what are the areas of specialization that would look at me in the face the moment I finish my BTEC and get my degree? Which are the niche or the future focused areas uh, that would be, you know, uh, my, my future destination for a career? Well, the, um, we hope that soon we'll be able to, to announce that on, on top of this uh, four year curriculum, we uh, have a five-year curriculum with an integrated uh, master degree and for this uh, five-year curriculum w we plan to have things defined not in terms of specialization, mechanical, civil and whatever, but in terms of challenges for the uh, Indian society. It could, so one of these challenges of course is the energy since any development is related to access to energy. So access to energy, I believe that this is something uh, quite well known in India. So this is one uh, area we can start with. The, the, the second point could be environment. Environment is a major issue for any country on the planet. And because we share the same planet and we already know that we are putting too much pressure on our planet, the environment is something all the industry will have to take care of, and not only to take care of, but also to make business with. Because having clean water, having clean cars, having clean cities, this is the solution has to come from the industry. Okay, and you have as a student to think that you can work in this area and you can make a very uh, very successful future working in such areas like uh, energy and environment. Oh, okay, another uh, uh, way, we, uh, another um, area you, you can think of is transportation. Transportation is extremely important. Uh, we are talking about globalization and you have to transport people, you have to transport goods and this is a uh, an entire area where you have to be, uh, you, where you need either people from computer science, either people for the planning, either people from electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or civil engineering. The, oh, this is related to all the uh, infra infrastructure a society actually needs. But you can think also to the field of um, new uh, communication technologies and IT. This is a domain where we think that our students could have a very great future. I will add that uh, in Ecole Centrale Paris we have a lot of students uh, who uh, go in different banks to become traders and this is also a future you can have after uh, our degree. Thank you, Professor. And uh, the mention of Ecole Centrale Paris actually uh, urges me to ask you a question uh, that's based on a very recent development and uh, we had made an announcement on our Facebook page and our website as well that Ecole Centrale Paris has uh, merged with Superlac and there's a new entity now uh, that has emerged from this synergy, uh, Central Superlac. Could you tell us if, in a few words about this new entity and about Superlac especially? Okay, the, um, this is a, a, a very good question. But Basically, uh, Ecole Centrale Paris um, was already uh, multi-disciplinary uh, in terms of the, the, the branches uh, we were offering to the, the students, but uh, 
to be um, a little bit more critical on, on it, uh, you could have found a few years ago that there we had some weaknesses in terms of uh, communication, in terms of uh, electronics and things like that. And the, the basic idea, especially when it comes to research, because our research labs are uh, basically more oriented on math, physics, uh, mechanical or civil engineering or chemistry, and we had at that time very few uh, strong labs, I would say, in terms of uh, electronics and uh, electricity, uh, electrical engineering. So uh, this uh, merge with Superlake uh, allows us to have a first class uh, multidisciplinary program, including uh, electronics communication. And it offers us not only this, it offers us two more campuses in France, one in the east of France and the other one on the uh, west of France in Rennes. And so we basically doubled the, the size of the school in terms of the number of students, uh, which now uh, reaches about 5,000 students. And on top of that, I have to add the network of all the Ecole Centrale in France first, where we have an additional, uh, several additional Ecole Centrale in France, one in Lyon, one in Nantes, one in Lille, and one in Marseille. So we have already uh, seven campuses in France, and we have, of course, the uh, Mahindra Ecole Centrale here in India, and we have the uh, Ecole Centrale of Beijing in China, and uh, next September we will open the uh, Ecole Centrale of Casablanca in Morocco. So having access to the Ecole Centrale, it is having access to a network of College of Engineering all over the world. Fantastic. That's really good news, and I'm sure uh, a lot of our MEC students already are aware of it and are thrilled at the prospects of having such a wider and greater reach across the world. And coming back to the curriculum and what it's going to shape in the future uh, from the you know the students that we already have and that we are going to engage in the future, the concept of entrepreneurship, Professor, that is something uh, that's very critical to most of the students nowadays because we have positioned ourselves as a, a, a business uh, technology institution, an institution that focuses equally, uh, equally well both on business as well as the engineering studies with a multidisciplinary perspective on it. So how do you think our curriculum would be able to create a better entrepreneur for the future? OK, the, it is important to come back to the uh, three major aspects of the um, a personality. You have uh, first the, the knowledge. I think we've been talking a lot about knowledge. The second important aspect to uh, make a, a good individual is the will. The, and it is basically what uh, the main characteristic we uh, try to develop uh, among the students uh, in terms of entrepreneurship. Because it's good to have a knowledge, but if you are not ready to apply this knowledge to the, to the world, to help people to do new things, then your knowledge is simply useless. Okay, so now the, the question is to, uh, to understand how you can develop this uh, entrepreneurship spirit in the, uh, the young generation. Well, the, the main thing you have to do is to reassure them and to make them not fearing the world and not fearing doing new things. This is extremely important, and this is what we do here in the curriculum in engaging them in many different projects and many different activities where they can start new things. And uh, so this entrepreneurship is just giving them the idea that they can take bets for the future. I, and they can convince themselves that, yes, I can do it, and let's do it. And let's do it not alone, but let's do it as a team. Because entrepreneurship means not only doing things for yourself and you alone, it's doing things as a group. 
a group having a common goal, defining a common goal, and finding the means to reach this common goal. This is the idea of entrepreneurship. There are a few uh, basic uh, things in terms of soft skills you, you can um, teach the students, but this entrepreneurship is more taught by, uh, well, by practice. This is the only way to, to do this by practice, not only by practice, but also by showing the students some great uh, engineers who did that in their career. And having the access to the industry, having access to people in the main drug group or having access to people in French company is also a way to show the students that they can also be entrepreneurs. Thank you, Professor. And uh, talking about entrepreneurship uh, as connected to industry, uh, could you dwell a little bit on the kind of industry internships that we are going to offer the prospective students? Okay, the, the internship is um, really the, um, the know-how of Ecole Centrale Paris because the, this connection between the, um, the academic world and the uh, industry is some, something you, I think you, you can't find in IITs, for example, where IITs are very great institutes, but they are more committed to uh, basic science and uh, engineering and not that much with the industry. This connection with the industry comes from, uh, first, people from the industry who can cover um, building uh, links with the students. And we already had one uh, uh, industry connect with the first year students uh, last uh, September with uh, very eminent people from the French companies and Indian companies who came and discussed with the, the student. So this is the first step. The, the last step is, of course, the internship. And in the internship, the students are completely immersed in the, uh, in the uh, industrial world, in the uh, business world. And so they have to interact with, but what is important is that uh, we have to select and as um, an institution, we select the mentors of the students in the companies, and we have a strong interaction between the faculty and the mentors of the students in the, uh, in the companies to guide the students and to help them uh, have the better start. You know, I'm a uh, mechanical engineering person, or, and what is important uh, when you have to, when you want to have uh, good trajectory is to have the best and the highest initial velocity. And the idea of this internship is to give the student the highest velocity to have uh, the best trajectory in their career. That's the, the idea of this internship. That's very well put, Professor. Thank you so much for answering that question in that style of yours. and. Uh, uh, I think we've already taken more time, though we have joined in late because of some technical issues on the Hangout. Uh, if you have any further questions on your display uh, Q&A box, you could uh, answer them. Otherwise, I think from our side, we have uh, asked you most of the questions that we've received over the emails. Uh, I don't see any new question here on my side. All right, then fine. I have one final question to ask you. Yeah. Uh, I remember you talking to us once about uh, uh, earthquakes and engineering and society and engineering. And I remember you telling us that uh, in India, uh, we, looking at the kind of earthquakes we've had in the recent past that have taken so many hundreds and thousands of lives, there was a talk about the structures of residences, uh, the, the buildings that people live in. And you told us that it's not earthquakes that kill people, but it's the buildings that kill people and which was a, a really uh, a stunning way and a different way of looking at it, at uh, uh, national calamities as well. Could you tell us a little bit about your specialization in earthquakes and how, it, uh, how your education helped you in you know, contributing considerably towards that? Well, um, the first thing I, I can say is that when I uh, was the age of our students, well, I decided to uh, 
do something when seeing uh, so many uh, casualties due to earthquake. I decided at that time to that earthquake engineering would be my specialty because I, I wanted to help people and to it is it looks so unfair when you see uh, so many people dying because they are born near an earthquake fault and that's for sure that you can think well that this is a calamity coming from you don't know where it could be the the big cat in the, uh, the uh, cat, the big catfish in in Japan or whatever, but the reality is that well, what kills people? It's the our buildings. So the main responsibility in the casualty is to engineers, is to uh, people planning the cities, and so as an engineer, we have a responsibility and we have a duty of helping people. Of course, you you can say that you, you need to put more money to uh, build stronger uh, buildings, but l let me tell you that uh, in the south of France, uh, having a building being protected against earthquake, it is only the cost of the carpets. So, which means that putting a lot of thinking a lot of intelligence in the design could end up with much safer design for everybody. And this is the uh, major role of an engineer to bring the best at the lower cost. And this is also the case in earthquake engineering and it's what we, we are uh, trying to do. Thank you, Professor. That's really commendable. And I'm uh, really happy that you answered this question for uh, you know, taking extra time, but I have a, a small query also from one of the you know students, uh, who general trend is uh, most of the students are preferring computer science engineering or electrical and electronics engineering or even mechanical engineering these days, and civil engineering for some reason seems to have taken the back seat when it comes to uh, being a preference or a choice. Uh, but uh, a lot of pundits believe otherwise. They feel that civil engineering has great relevance and scope in the future. And you, you being part of uh, structural engineering and mechanical civil aspects of engineering, I would like to tell us from your perspective how civil engineering stands in the future context. That will be my last question, I promise. Okay. Civil engineering, well, the, um, I think the, well, when you, uh, travel in India, you can very easily understand that most of the challenges of the Indian society, and I'm not talking only about the uh, Indian high tech industry, I'm talking about the Indian society, and most of the issues are in the field of civil engineering. So I believe that if, as a student, I want to do something for my country, for my society to make a better living for uh, all the Indians, I definitely think that civil engineering is a very, very good choice. Now, the question is whether, well, you can uh, make this choice, this personal choice, but will I be, as a student, uh, will I be able to have a good career in choosing civil engineering? Well, the idea is that if the, everybody is rushing in computer science, then it's going to be extremely difficult to be the best one in computer science. Whereas if I go to civil engineering, where there are so many needs, I can be extremely successful in civil engineering. So that could be another idea of, well, in the, when building a career, it's not always a good idea to uh, go where the other goes because if you have to be innovative but maybe you, you could try something else. So this is a, a second reason for uh, civil engineering to, to be um, one uh, important uh, branch and uh, well I, I tend to think that civil engineering is often dismissed and uh, most of the uh, major innovation uh, in mechanical engineering in my field of, uh, let's say, for example, the finite element method, uh, it has been 
invented by civil engineers. And we have many, many great scientists being civil engineering, being taught as civil engineering, and then they can evolve in different fields. And once again, it's not because you have chosen civil engineering that you won't be uh, able to do something else later because you are trained as an engineer. You are trained as a multidisciplinary engineer here at Ecole Centrale Paris, uh, uh, main dry Ecole Centrale, sorry. And uh, so civil engineering is only your specialty. It's not the, uh, the end of the, the game in, in your life. Thank you, Professor, for that wonderful uh, response. You're right in saying uh, it has to be an educated decision. We cannot, uh, you know, follow the others and not be a leader ourselves, and uh, you know, uh, get, succumb to the current trends and sacrifice something that could be actually more precious in the long run. And uh, with that last question, I uh, shall thank all our viewers and especially uh, the, those who have asked us these wonderful questions all along, and also you. Uh, Professor Didier for taking time out on a Sunday to spend a precious hour with us mm -hmm. and we look forward to having more hangouts with you in the near future and in the far future in our regional languages as well. Remember that. Okay. Thank okay. you and have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.